I'm going to give you in this video five tips for handling a narcissist. Let's set the stage first. What are you dealing with here? You're dealing with a person who's not really a person. It's more like you're dealing with a cloud of nanobots in some weird sci-fi horror movie video game. And that cloud of nanobots can show up as whatever they need to show up as. They can appear as any person they need to appear as, as any entity they need to appear as, in order to generate an emotion from you. They are emotion generating entities. There isn't really a person there, like you would understand a normal person with normal motivations. It's more like a piece of artificial intelligence that induces emotions in others. Understand that. What they are there to do is induce emotion in you. If you want to fight back, you must disrupt that symbiotic parasitic relationship between their actions, which are all false, which come from no authenticity whatsoever, the only reason why they're taking an action is to induce a reaction in you. From that point of view, as much as you're thinking, oh my God, this whole scenario, this whole drama, it's all about them. Yes, you're right. But from a different point of view, this perceptual shift that I'm giving you, tactically, imagine like I'm, uh, this is the military and I'm training you to go into battle with the enemy, but the enemy is artificial intelligence. And I'd say, soldier, you need to think about this battlefield in a new way, a different way. That entity, not a person, that entity is inducing emotions in you. And that's their power. That's their strength. We have to disrupt their supply lines. We have to disrupt their whole strategy. And that comes down to emotion. So that's the first thing I want you to know. The second thing that I would say to you is somehow, some way, this is between you and God. This is between you and your therapist. This is between you and you your communication with yourself. You must break this cycle of action, reaction, action, reaction. They act, you react. They're narcissists, your echo. So everything you're doing is reactionary. Imagine if you were a, a boxing or doing MMA, or you were in a, a real military battle, and all of your actions were only being determined by the last terrible thing your opponent did, that's an awful strategy. That's a terrible boxer. That means that you're fighting the way they want you to fight. You're doing exactly what they want you to do when they want you to do it. That's an unacceptable mode of being because you're now completely predictable and they have you boxed in. You have to break this cycle. And the only way to break the cycle, comrades, is with detachment. You must detach. The cycle is a stimulus response, stimulus response. So they act, you react, they act to your reaction, and then you react again. They're playing uh, that game, uh, battleships, right? You can only find out where your enemy is by attacking the area around them. And whenever you hit a target, you get to map them. You're like, oh, there they are. That's what they're doing with you. They're, and they've already done this to you for a while, so they know exactly your weak spots, they know exactly where all your resources are, all your strengths are, they're gonna stay away from all your strengths and all your weaknesses, and they're gonna just hone in on your weaknesses. You must break the cycle. The best way to break the cycle is through detachment. You have to have the discipline of a warrior to say, I am no longer going to permit myself to simply react to whatever this person does. I have to create space, use religion, prayer, meditation, therapy, whatever it takes, there must be space between them doing what they do because they're going to do what they do. They're going to do the same shit tomorrow that they did today and your response. When you start to break it, it's a skill, it's a strength, it develops over time, it's something you have to condition, it's uncomfortable. They'll push that button. They'll say, oh, you're just like your mother and you'll feel that rage, you'll feel that indignation and you'll try and defend yourself but you're defending yourself in the way you've already defended yourself the previous 100 times. They know every single move you've got. You must pull back and detach and not respond. That's the beginning of you starting to take your power back in that situation. The next thing I suggest you do is become psychopathic. Become psychopathic. When dealing with a narcissist, psychopathy will trump their narcissism. That's an evil piece of advice to give. I didn't say become a psychopath. I said become psychopathic. You must be goal orientated. This is how we define a psychopath as a psychopath. When you communicate with the narcissist, what is your objective? What are you trying to get done? 
You're never just communicating with a narcissist. That's gone. You abandon all sincere communication when communicating with the terminally insincere. Abandon all sincere communication. Do not tell them what you're thinking. Do not tell them what you're feeling. Do not tell them the truth about where you were today. Do not tell them the truth about your life, your childhood, nothing. Anything you say can and will be used against you. It's all ammunition. All that information is ammunition. Never speak with your guard down with the narcissist. Be goal orientated. When you speak, you speak with purpose or you do not speak. When you communicate, you communicate to fulfill your objective, not theirs, or you do not communicate. Actually, narcissists are quite easy to trip up. They really hate silence. They hate silence. So if you withdraw, if you go low contact or no contact, we all know this, it generates an awful lot of distress. Because without being told, it's like a, um, a predator using a sonar, without getting the pings back, or a bat, a bat that doesn't see too well, and they're using that sonar to detect where you are, if they don't get the pings back, that's your communication, by the way, in this metaphor, zoological metaphor, they don't know where you are, they don't know where you've gone, and it's like they've lost you completely, and they'll become very, very distressed and very, very anxious. What are the pings back? Your communication rooted in your emotional reactions. Reduce the emotional reactions, reduce the communications. Like if you have to talk to them, use less words. If you have to text them and they send you a, a 500 word essay about what a terrible human being you are, then you send five words back if you have to talk to them. Either go low contact or go no contact if you can. Some of us can't go no contact, so you reduce the contact as low as you possibly can. You stop telling them the truth. This is terrible advice. This is immoral advice. I said you have to be psychopathic. Give up the idea of being a good, righteous, moral human being who's going to create redemption with another human being along a horizontal power structure. For the narcissist, there is no horizontal power structure. There's only a vertical power structure. And they're up there and you're down here. There's nothing else. The fourth piece of advice that I would give you is remember that this is a game. It's not real communication, that's not a real person. You can either get played or you can play the game. So my advice to you is play the game. Be goal orientated, play the game. You have to take the game to them. You can't be in defense all the time. It's exhausting, you'll break and you'll give up. You have to play the game. You have to take the fight to the enemy. You have to put them on the back foot. You have to confuse them. You have to hit them with something that they weren't expecting. So when you're thinking about this, think in terms of strategy. Think in terms of almost militarily. You can't afford the indulgence and the luxury of just reacting emotionally to what they're doing to you. It's going to wear you down. It's going to wear you out. It's a game that you're playing and you must start winning. The best thing you can do is take the fight to them using deception as the platform. Be deceptive. Use artifice. Set up things that are not real. Tell them that you have problems in your life that you don't have. That's if you have to be in contact. I'd rather you had no contact with them whatsoever, went to therapy, healed, and got on with your life. That's what I would prefer. And ultimately, that's the best revenge. I think that says that in the Talmud. The best revenge is living well. Ancient Jewish wisdom, follow it. If you can't, and you've got to be in contact with them, do this instead. Diminish the contact as much as you can, and within that contact, you must be using deception and artifice in order to maintain the frame of taking the fight to them. You cannot afford to communicate sincerely with them. Don't tell them what you're thinking, what you're feeling, or what you're doing. Don't do that, it's an awful mistake. Don't do that hoping that they're gonna awaken from this narcissistic nightmare and show up as Prince or Princess Charming. They ain't. The fifth and final thing that you must be willing to embrace when you're dealing with a narcissist who is seeking to manipulate you is you must manipulate them. Oh, that's terrible, I could never do you must. Break all contact with them. If you can't break contact with them and you have to be in contact with them, you manipulate them. You decide what your goals are. Maybe you're in contact with them because of um, uh, shared custody with children, or you're running a business together, or you're in a location where you can't avoid them, like, I don't know, prison or university. You have to see them. 
you must get out of. So a narcissist, uh, narcissist and echo, narcissus and echo from the Greek myth from which we get narcissistic personality disorder. Narcissus spoke and echo, the wood nymph, responded. Narcissus is masculine. He's in love with his own image. Echo is in love with him and can only say the last few words that he said. So if you're on the receiving end of this right now and you're getting frustrated, whether you're a man or a woman, could be a heterosexual, homosexual relationship, really doesn't make any difference. You've got one person who's setting the terms through abuse, through drama. They do mad stuff. I nearly swore. They do mad stuff. You now have to take that to them if you have to be in contact with them. You must be goal orientated. If your predominant goal is to see more of your kids or to reduce their contact with your kids, that's the objective. And you have to manipulate them into getting what you want. If your goal is that you want to be paid fairly or you don't want to be kicked out of your rental unfairly or you don't want to end up in a fight in prison, then that's the goal. One goal, maybe two, define them. So in your head you go, I have two objectives here. This isn't a normal uh, conversation. This is a game. I have to use military style strategy here. Here's my primary objective. If I can't meet my primary objective, because all good uh, plans have levels, multiple levels of redundancy in them. No good plan survives contact with the enemy. And then you have your secondary objective if you can't hit your primary objective. But at all times, whether it's sport or the military or dealing with narcissists, you're trying to keep yourself safe. You're trying to protect yourself and your loved ones at all times. That's the top priority. If you slip and you think, no, my objective is to heal them. My objective is to heal the relationship. My objective is to make everything okay. You're doomed. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed that video. If you are interested in finding out more about how to break from a narcissistically abusive relationship, I have a course called Unplug from the Matrix of Narcissistic Abuse, and it's available from my website. Follow the link below. Thank you.